Let me, first of all, recognize and appreciate the presence of the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Communications, Information, Technology of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the Honorable Deborah Session Mikhail, and also acknowledge the presence of the distinguished panelists that are here, the Honorable Ministers that are in our audience, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and dear friends. For me, it is a great honor and privilege to be here this afternoon, this evening, not only to be in the midst of these great minds and men and women of accomplishments, but also because of the importance of the subject that is before us and what it means to us as humankind and the future, which is also the theme of this third conference. We welcome you back because I understand you are coming back to Addis Ababa after 10 years. And indeed, you come here at the right time because those of you who would have been here 10 years ago would notice the tremendous change that has taken place in this great country and especially in the area of infrastructure, including the ICT. The overall theme of this conference and the great participation of the participants that have come from all parts of the world clearly shows the importance that you attach, but how it is touching all of us. When Mark was asking us to raise hands up, I thought only a few were going to raise hands up as to how internet affects them or they use it. It's not surprising because being in this privileged group, what, what one would call the cream of the cream, it was not surprising to see almost 100% of the people that have been touched or affected by internet. Indeed, statistics tell us that 40% of internet usage is to provide solutions to education, to governance, and to health. And many of us do encounter, uh, or encounter these aspects in our daily life. And indeed, the definition of learning here, as I stand here, I see it not just implying those that are in classrooms. It implies those of us in offices, the farmers, the pharmacists, and everybody else, and how internet would help in making our work and our environment and also our life much easier. But as we meet here, and we are so happy as the African Union also to co-host this conference, and as I welcome you on behalf of my chairperson of the African Union, Dr. Konzazana Lamin Zuma, I want to tell you that you also come here at a very uh, opportune time when we ourselves are looking at how effectively we can be able to use internet to advance some of the goals that we have for the continent. Indeed, we have just launched what we call Agenda 2063, which really means the next 50 years, because that 2053 starts from 2013, when we celebrated 50 years of the existence of the African Union plus the OAU. In that Agenda 2063, we have carved out what we call the first 10 years, and there are a number of flagship projects that we want to implement as part of the roadmap to take us to Agenda 2063. Some of them address the very core issues that this meeting here is looking at. 
first of all, we are looking at the critical issue of how we can take advantage of the demographic dividend that Africa posts of today. Indeed, everybody knows that Africa is the youngest continent, that Africa will remain young in the next many years, and that come 2050, 2063, Africa perhaps will be accounting for half of the world's population in terms of the youthful population. The question is, how do we deliver this young population to participate in the global economy? Part of it, and our priority number one for the continent, is first of all to impart education and skills. And in education and skills, we have also determined that our priority is first of all, and I was happy to hear when Mark was talking about what Singapore and others did. If you look at the model that was adopted by Lee Kuan Yew and the others, it was first of all to teach science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And that is what we have resolved to have as our priority for the continent. And given the big numbers, in fact, when you look at the numbers, some of which were given here, of many African children, leave alone the, child, uh, the girl child, who are not in school, it is obvious that if we are going to invest in schools, classrooms, build those classrooms, bring teachers to those classrooms, it perhaps will take us much longer to achieve these objectives than if we use some of these technologies. So this is why we in Africa must be in the mainstream, not only of using, but also being in the innovation. And the examples that have been given here do indicate that we have the potential, we have the capacity, we have the skills, not only just to use, but also participate. In terms of our own efforts, as Africa Union, we have established what we call the Pan-African University. It has five, what we call, centers of excellence, and looking at various areas where we feel that Africa has shortfalls in terms of skills. But we know that the model we're using at the moment of having these physical facilities, one campus in Algeria, the other one in Nigeria, the other one in Kenya, the other one in South Africa, and another one in Cameroon, with satellite campuses all over, is not going to be able to fulfill the needs that we have for the continent. And for that reason, we are now looking at actively on launching what we call a virtual university within this program. And uh, so you put yourself in trouble, uh, my friend Gunther, when you talked about German participating, and we want to commend your participation here. And we know the role that German has played, and we hope many of others will come to this uh, great mission to participate in us elevating the many young Africans that have not been able to access education by us launching this virtual university so that we can have that access, not only internet access now, but also education access for the continent. And so, as you are here in the next three days, and as we are looking at this exciting topic, talking about enriching tomorrow, we see ourselves in this very picture because Africa, as the youngest continent, is indeed looking at how we can enrich ourselves through this facility, through this technology, that Africa can transform and achieve prosperity in terms of poverty reduction, but also prosperity and be part of the global society. So we are here to welcome you, to thank you for coming in large numbers, but also to look, in, to look forward to the outcome of this great conference. And as they say, bienvenue, Merci beaucoup. Asante sana, that's what they say in Swahili. Um, 
And then uh, Amarik, they will say, Amasaginaro. Thank you so much and most welcome.